lines and angles. In this module, you will learn about introduction to lines and angles, adjacent angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles, linear pair, vertically opposite angles, transversal, angles made by transversal, transversal of parallel lines and checking for parallel lines. You have already learned about how to identify different lines, line segment, angles in shapes. Can you identify some one of them here? Let's recall it. Now, let us learn about more angles and pairs of lines. Have you noticed a book open in this way or a steering wheel? You will find that pairs of angles are formed placed next to each other. When two angles have a common vertex and common side and do not overlap on each other, then they are called as adjacent angles. In this figure, angle ABC is adjacent to angle CBD because they have a common vertex B and common side BC and arm AB and BD are on either side of the common arm and do not overlap on each other. Guess whether these angles are adjacent or not. When we add the sum of any two angle and we get the sum as 90 then the angles are said to be Complementary angles. It is not necessary that both are adjacent to each other. If they are adjacent, they form a right angle. Example, angles 40 degree and 50 degree are complementary angles. Because they add up to 90 degree, also they form a right angle here. But here, angles 27 degree and 63 degree are not forming right angle. But still, they are complementary as their addition is 90 degree. Each angle in complementary angles is said to be complement of each other. Can two acute angles be complementary angles? Let's check. Yes, it can. Let us add the angles given here. We find that the sum of measures of angles comes as 180 degree. Such a pair of angles whose sum equals 180 degree are said to be supplementary angles. If we put two angles adjacent to each other, they form a straight line. That is, addition of two angles make a straight angle. For example, angle 140 degrees and 40 degrees are supplementary angles because they add up to 180 degree and forms a straight angle. Here, non-adjacent angles 60 degrees and 120 degrees are also supplementary because their addition is 180 degree. Each angle in supplementary angles is said to be supplement of each other. Two angles that are adjacent to each other and are supplementary, then they are said to be forming a linear pair of angles. In this figure, two lines intersecting each other forms a linear pair of angles. Angle 1 and 2 forms a linear pair. Angle 2 and 4 forms a linear pair. Similarly, angle 3 and 4 and angle 3 and 1 forms a linear pair of angles. When two lines cross, four angles are formed. Those angles opposite each other are called vertically opposite angles and are equal in size. In this figure, non-adjacent angles, angle A and B, and angle C and D are vertically opposite angles. And measure of angle A is equal measure of angle B. And measure of angle C is equal to measure of angle D.
Vertical angles always share a common vertex and sum of two pairs of vertical angle with common vertex is always 360 degrees. We know that when two lines intersect, they are called intersecting lines. But if a line cuts two different lines at distinct point, then this line is called a transversal of those two lines. That is, a transversal is a line that crosses at least two other lines. In this figure, we see line AB is the transversal as it passes to more than one different line. Let us learn about angles that are made by a transversal when it cuts two lines. Suppose line L and M are cut at transversal P. Then if we name the angles as given here, then eight angles marked here have a special name given as angles 3, angle 4, angle 5 and angle 6 lies in the interior of two lines therefore are called as interior angles. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 7 and angle 8 lies in exterior of two lines therefore they are called as exterior angles. Angle 1 and 5, angle 2 and 6, angle 3 and 7 and angle 4 and 8 are called as pairs of corresponding angles as they lie at same location at each intersection. Angle 1 and 8 and angle 2 and 7 are called as pairs of alternate exterior angles as they lie outside the two lines and on opposite sides of transversal. Angle 3 and angle 6, angle 4 and angle 5 are called as pairs of alternate interior angles as they lie in the interior of two lines and on opposite sides of transversal. Similarly, angle 3 and 5 and angle 4 and 6 are called as pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal as they lie inside the two lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Remember, corresponding angles have different vertices and are on same side of the transversal in corresponding positions relative to the line. And alternate angles have different vertices and are always on opposite side of transversal, lying between or outside the lines. Do you remember parallel lines? Two lines that never meet are parallel lines. Now, when a transversal cuts two parallel lines, some interesting results can be found relating to angles we saw. Now let us see that. Take a paper, draw lines L and M parallel to each other and line T intersecting both. Then mark angles 1 to 8 on it. Now place a tracing paper on it and trace the lines and angles on it. Now slide the tracing paper along T until line L coincide with M. We see that angle 1 and 2 coincide and show the same angle. That is, angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Similarly, if we move the tracing paper in different direction, we will notice that angle 3 is equal to angle 4, angle 5 is equal to angle 6 and angle 7 is equal to angle 8. That is, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of corresponding angles are equal in measure. Now here, angle 3 is equal to angle 7 as they are vertically opposite angles. But angle 7 is also equal to angle 8 as they are corresponding angles. So angle 3 will also be equal to angle 8. Similarly, we can get the result that angle 1 is equal to angle 6. So we got the result that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate interior angles are equal. From this, we can get some other results such as angle 3 plus angle 1 is equal to 180 degree as they form linear pair. And we know that angle 1 is also equal to angle 6 as they form pair of alternate interior angles. Therefore, we can say that angle 3 plus angle 6 is also equal to 
180 degrees. Similarly, angle 1 plus 8 is also equal to 180 degrees. Thus, we got the result as, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. These results can be easily remembered if you observe it in F and Z shapes. That is, the F shape stands for the corresponding angles, while the Z shape stands for the alternate angles. We have already learned that if two lines are parallel, then a transversal gives rise to pairs of equal corresponding angles, equal alternate interior angles and interior angles on the same side of the transversal, being supplementary. By using above result, can we decide whether two distinct lines are parallel or not? Yes, just use the vice versa. That is, when any two distinct lines are given and a transversal. First, if pairs of corresponding angles are equal, then the lines have to be parallel. Second, if the pairs of alternate angles are equal, then the lines have to be parallel. Third, if pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, then the lines have to be parallel. Let us revise all that we learned in this module on lines and angles.